Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to upload another very interesting and uh, informative video tutorial related to defect passivation for tin based paraviscite solar cells. And uh, in this video, I will add uh, more details uh, related to my previous uh, uploaded video that was about uh, defect passivation uh, with uh, interfacial engineering. So uh, this video is very helpful for all those people who are working on uh, defect passivation domain and uh, those students and those, those researchers who are going to improve the power conversion efficiency performance parameters related to periviscite solar cells uh, in either lab experimental session or simulation session. Uh, and this video is basically uh, a dedicated to one of my uh, PhD uh, friend from Malaysia who advised me to make this video, particularly on uh, uh, today's additive that I'm going to use uh, in my simulation work. So uh, I have just prepared a tentative draft so that uh, I can start my today's video. So let me share with all of you. Okay, dear friends, uh, you can see that I have just shared my uh, tentative craft and uh, uh, some key notes for today's uh, uh, video session. So you can see that this is, it is basically the lesson number 13 and lesson number 12 was about the defect passivation with interfacial engineering. So in my uh, today's session, today's video session, I'm going to add uh, an other technique that can be adopted in order to passivate the defects in uh, either tin based paraviscite, in lead based paraviscite, or tin lead mixed mix paraviscite. And you can also use with some other tentative paraviscite solar cell as well. So today's topic is about what defect passivation uh, and performance improvement via substrate modification. So first of all, I need to explain the theory behind what, why I'm going to use this topic for my video and the, what can be its significance. Uh, if someone is interested in simulating the periviscite solar cells in scabs, uh, he must have some tentative types in his mind. Like uh, we know that there are three kinds of mainly types like you can say that uh, uh, inverted architectures, non-inverted architectures, and massoporous architectures. Uh, we can design inverted, non-inverted, and I have already uh, designed a lot of inverted and non-inverted architecture in my previously simulated videos. But uh, today I'm going to talk about specifically on this uh, term substrate modification, and I'm going to uh, focus on the significance of substrate modification, how we can improve substrate and how we can passivate the defects and what are the tentative basically techniques and uh, substitutions that can improve our power conversion efficiency and performance parameter. And in the last session, I will try to compare my control device with passivated device and I will support my uh, results by JV characteristics analysis and quantum efficiency analysis. And one can also add some other performance analysis as well. So first thing, you know that when we are talking about the planar uh, architectures, non-inverted architectures, one must know that uh, these kind of architectures have uh, a little bit disadvantage over inverted ones because uh, the probability of uh, carrier mobility, like I'm going to talk about the whole extraction is greater than that of the electron extraction uh, from absorber layer towards its transporting layers. Actually, what it means, uh, we have seen that large number of carrier mobility of holes are prominent in planar. Uh, planar architecture and IP architectures. And in case of electronic mobility, electron extraction from absorber to towards its ETL material is little bit slower. It means what? It means that uh, planar uh, architectures and IP architectures suffer more recombinational defects between ETL and the perovskite. So we need to suppress down the these uh, these defects, these recombination defects, and I'm going to talk about the defects. Defects are normally three 
kind in case of stab simulation it can be radiative it can be non radiative it can be a chocolate red hole combination and it can be like agar uh, type recombinational defects so normally we compute what what in scabs we normally compute in non radiative recombination that normally arises between paraviscite and tentative interfaces so what actually we need to do we need to improve our substrate we need to improve our electron transport material in order to increase the electronic extraction from generated uh, absorber layer towards its tentative etl layer and then towards its uh, back metal contact or frank metal contact like that so remember that in today's video i am going to do what i am going to add some uh, doping uh, lithium based doping uh, molar ratio in uh, traditional titanium dioxide in order to improve my what substrate modification so uh, what is the basic problem statement for today's video A problem statement is that when we are going to use a uh, simple titanium dioxide layer uh, undoped layer in our nip architecture planar architecture what actually happens i just told that it will definitely uh, increase the chocolate red hole combination rate that will definitely reduce the power conversion efficiency performance parameter and other uh, fill factor and uh, short circuit current value so when we try to use titanium dioxide undoped without modification without substrate modification we would have what we have serious series resistance we have high series resistance i have already prepared a video related to effect of series and shunt resistance and remember that when we have higher series resistance definitely our performance parameter will degrade one must know that series resistance should be lower and shunt resistance should be higher in order to improve performance parameter and power conversion efficiency of device second thing is what we have lower carrier mobility if we are using titanium dioxide undoped and this carrier mobility is basically i'm talking about what i'm talking about the generated electrons from the absorber layer and its uh, mobility towards etl that will be poor and if that will be poor there will be probability of more recombination the combination of electron and holes within the interface of paraviscite and the etl so third thing is that when we do use normally titanium dioxide undoped what happened we have larger the band gaps and uh, we know that if we have larger the band gap we will definitely have lower carrier diffusion and carrier mobility and poor band gap alignment as well one of the most and hot uh, topic these that uh, related to uh, paraviscite solar cell that they have poor band gap alignments that is one of also considered as one of the key performance degradation parameters and in my next video uh, i will try to talk about the band gap alignment how we can improve band gap alignment how we can improve conduction bands offset value and valence band offset value that can be a very good topic as well for one person who is going to pursue his research work in uh, paraviscite domain so fourth one is that we will have lower energy and conduction band and fifth one i just have explained that we will have uh, higher recombination rate chocolate red hull combination rate if we try to use titanium dioxide uh, simple without substrate modification now next thing is that how we can fix these kind of problems how we can improve substrate modification so there are some tentative techniques there can be more but i prefer some a little bit uh, more informative and more addition towards this video so that one can understand what are the possible uh, additives then can be used in order to improve the substrate modification uh, like first one that is basically the main idea of today's video i am going to talk about i am going to talk about what i am going to use uh, lithium with different molar ratios like you can say that in lab experimental session we can say that 3% 5% 7% 10% like that but in case of simulation we cannot say that uh, 3% 4% i am just saying that with lithium dot with different molar ratio within titanium dioxide this is the first technique that can be adopted in order to improve the substrate modification in order to improve the uh, power conversion efficiency and other performance parameter second thing is that replacement replacement of typical titanium dioxide with c60 fluorine third one is basically use of titanium uh, trichloride uh, tetrachloride 
TiCl4 additive with use of uh, Ti and chloride, uh, uh, chloride composition in order to improve the substrate modification. Fourth one is use the amino acid group, and it has been seen that in lab experiment session, use of amino acid, use of inorganic substrate definitely improves the power conversion efficiency and performance parameter by passivating the uh, defects. It can be surface defect, it can be recombinational defects, like it can be. But when we are talking about simulation work, I'm specifically focusing on interfacial defects. I'm specifically uh, trying to reduce the chocolate hull combination rates. And fifth one is basically substitution with benzoic acid. So uh, uh, this, these are some problem statements that I have just stated why we uh, have lower performance parameter if we use titanium dioxide simple without um, undo. And uh, these are some possible tentative suggestions that can be adopted in order to improve the substrate, in order to increase uh, the power conversion efficiency in other parameters as well. So today I'm going to talk about how we can uh, simulate lithium uh, doped base with different molar ratio within titanium dioxide, how we can improve the substrate modification, and how we can simulate uh, uh, these kind of doped devices in scaps 1D that is basically particularly used for uh, solar cell simulation. And I have already uh, uploaded a lot of videos related to introduction, related to parametric analysis and so on. So now I'm going to move towards the simulation part after the explanation of theory and after the explanation of the problem statement and tentative suggestions. I hope uh, 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 these informations are sufficient for one person in order to un understand the physics, understand uh, the uh, concept of utilization of uh, lithium uh, with different molar ratio within titanium dioxide. So let's uh, start towards the simulation uh, side. I will try to simulate first the control device with, without uh, the doping of lithium uh, additive within titanium dioxide. And secondly, uh, I will try to simulate a, a structure that is being uh, computed with the lithium doped with the different molar ratios of titanium dioxide. And then in the last, I will support my theory and support my justifications with some uh, results like JV characteristic analysis and with, uh, you can see quantum efficiency. So I'm going to now switch my screen towards my simulation side so that uh, I can start my, for my uh, simulation part. Okay, dear friends, now I'm going towards the, my last session and last part of my today's video. That is about the simulation of control device and the simulation of uh, um, uh, uh, modified device that is being modified with the uh, substrate modification via lithium doped and uh, different molar ratio within titanium dioxide. So in my last part, I will try to simulate both structures and uh, I will try to explain uh, how our power conversion efficiency is being improved with the use of uh, lithium doping with different molar ratio within titanium dioxide. So uh, dear friends, you can see that over here is my device structure in which what I'm going to do, uh, I have copper thiocyanide as a whole transport material, methyl ammonium tin tribromide absorber perviscite layer, titanium dioxide, that is one undoped. That is why I'm, I'm saying that this is the control structure. And fluorine di or, uh, FTO uh, glass layer as a front metal contact. So uh, this is basically the NIP planar architecture in which light is being incident from the bottom of the portion. And uh, uh, we can see that we don't have any kind of doping. We don't have any kind of substrate modification in ETL layer. What actually happens and uh, why our performance will be degraded? Remember that I have already explained in the initial uh, part of my video that uh, planar architecture normally suffers more recombination defects, particularly due to the poor electronic uh, carrier mobility towards these ETL electron transport layers. So uh, we will have more chocolate hull combination uh, rates between perviscite and titanium dioxide interface. 
So we need to improve. We need to improve the power conversion efficiency. In my last video, I have told, I have already explained that one can use interfacial engineering. In tomorrow, today's video, I'm saying that we can also improve the power conversion efficiency and other performance parameters using substrate modification. For that case, I'm using lithium to different molar ratio. So, so let's start, start to simulate this device in order to compute the optoelectrical properties of uh, undoped, or we can say that the control one device, and then I can switch my uh, second simulation device that is about the uh, doped device, that is about the substrate modified device. And what we have in, uh, in that case in related to VOC, short circuit, field factor, and power conversion efficiency. And in the last session, I will explain what are the tentative advantages that we have if we some way somehow uh, use some tentative techniques that I have already explained that if we have uh, modified our substrate, what are the advantages on our Paris sky device. So let's start this simulation. Okay. So I'm going to perform basically the two analysis, uh, JV characteristics analysis and the quantum efficiency analysis in order to support my today's video session. So to, to, to today's uh, theoretical concept, one person can also adopt CV analysis, uh, CF analysis as well. That is about the more shockle analysis. And uh, this is about the effect of the frequency on capacitance. So I'm going to simulate. We need to wait while simulation is being carried out so that I can show you my tentative results without uh, substrate modification. Definitely, we will see that we will have lower VOC value, power conversion efficiency, and short circuit current value as well. And the reason behind that, we have more chocolate hall combination rate, and we have more recombination defects between periviscite and ETL. Okay, let's see about uh, JV characteristic analysis. Okay. Okay, dear friends, you can see that I have just computed the JV analysis that is about uh, voltage and the current. And normally uh, it is called JV characteristics analysis that is very common in solar cell and perovskite uh, as well. We can see that our VOC value has been uh, limited to 0 0.81 short circuit 28, fill factor 81.55 and efficiency 19.13. Uh, we need to note down this control performance parameter in order to compare these uh, control performance parameters with the modified version of uh, uh, device structure. Now I am going to up, uh, simulate the second structure that is basically the modified structure uh, with the different molar ratio of lithium within titanium dioxide. Then I will conclude and then I will sh uh, explain my results and advantages. Okay, now I am going to upload uh, and other structure, okay. Okay, dear friends, uh, now I have another structure uh, that is going to be simulated right now. Uh, this structure is basically what you can see that I have a little bit modification in electron transport layer. Actually, I am using lithium with different molar ratio in order to dope uh, this electron transport layer in order to make better carrier mobility in order to uh, passivate the defects. That's why I have already explained that today I'm going to do what I'm going to modify my substrate in order to passivate the defects in order to increase the performance parameter of my uh, tin based periviscite solar cell simulation in SCAPS 1D. So uh, I have already expressed that lithium, we can in lab session, we can use different molar ratios, 3%, 5%, 7%, 8%, 10%, 15%, and 20 as well. But in case of simulation, we are a little bit restricted. We can refer, we can say that by doping uh, with lithium, with titanium dioxide, what kind of results we have. Uh, we can have better um, uh, substrate modification and that definitely tentatively improve our performance parameters and the power conversion efficiency. So let's simulate this device. Okay. I'm going to simulate this device. Okay. We need to wait while the second structure is being simulated. 
and then I can compare my modified results with my controlled results, and then I can explain that uh, what are the advantages. So I will justify my today's theoretical concept with two analysis, with JV with the quantum efficiency, and definitely we will see that we will have better JV characteristics curves, and we will have better performance parameter, and we will have better quantum efficiency in case of the device that is being modified with lithium doping with different molar ratio within titanium dioxide. Okay, uh, okay, okay, uh, students, uh, you can see that. Uh, the blue curve, the blue curve, the blue curve, the higher upper curve is basically the second device simulation curve. That is uh, about the uh, curve that is being obtained with the substrate modification with different uh, lithium doping molar ratio within titanium dioxide. We can see that uh, short circuit current value is surprisingly increased from 28 to 32.72. And the VOC value has been increased from 0 0.81 to 0 0.84. And the same scene was seen that the power conversion efficiency has been improved from 19.13 to 20.87. Now I need to explain, I need to justify why my performance parameter has been improved. Let's talk about this one. Remember that we are going to do what? We are going to suppress the defects. What kind of defects? We are talking about the interfacial defect that normally arises between paraviscite and ETL due to poorer carrier mobility of electrons towards tentative transporting layers that normally arises in combination defects. And when we have doped lithium with different molar ratio within titanium dioxide, what happened? We have modify the substrate. We have improved the carrier mobility. Uh, we have uh, lowered down the band gap value of our titanium dioxide. We have what we have lower JV hysteresis losses uh, in case of with substrate modification due to different molar ratio of uh, lithium within titanium dioxide. In all cases, we will have lower uh, recombination factor, role recombination defects, role recombination uh, current between ETL and the paraviscite absorber layer. In that case, our dark saturation current will definitely reduce due to low recombination rate. In that case, our VOC has been increased. Remember that dark saturation current normally increases with the high recombination factors, but we have seen that our recombination rate has been suppressed down due to substrate modification. And that is the reason we have a lower dark saturation current that is normally J dot. In some paper, you can see that there is formula and mathematically com computation as well. And same case, we have seen that due to uh, lower recombination uh, defects, lower combination rates, we will have short circuit current value improved. And the resultant will be what we have higher power conversion efficiency as well. So, so we can see that. So from the first analysis, I just justified this red one is basically the controlled one. The control device performance parameter were lower. Why? I have explained. And when I use the modified, when I have adopted the second structure that is uh, modified structure with substrate modification, we will have better power conversion efficiency and other parameter as well. And I have already explained that why our power conversion efficiency has been increased. Now I'm going to justify my uh, this concept with another analysis that is the quantum efficiency analysis. Okay, uh, you can see that uh, dear students and friends, uh, we have two curves in quantum efficiency. First one is basically uh, uh, red one that is basically the controlled one. And second one is basically uh, blue one that is modified one. So it is clearly seen that uh, it is clearly seen that uh, the curve blue one is higher. Now I'm going to explain the quantum efficiency improvement with respect to my lower recombination defects. Uh, one person can easily find from uh, literature review that if we have uh, 
high quantum efficiency, what happens? We will have definitely better band gap alignment. We will have definitely uh, suppression of recombinational defects. And uh, the red one is basically the control one. And uh, you can see that little bit lower. It means, but we have poor uh, band gap alignment. We will have uh, negative values of conduction band offset value, valence band offset value. In short, we can say that we have cliff structure. That is some other theory. I will explain in my later videos what is cliff structure, how we can convert our cliff structure towards a spike structure, how we can improve our valence band and offset values as well. So uh, I hope uh, from these two analysis, I have justified my today's concept. That was about the utilization of lithium with titanium dioxide with different molar ratio to improve the substrate, to improve the power conversion efficiency, fill factor, and other performance parameter as well. So uh, uh, I hope this session will be very helpful for all those persons who are going to um, work in defect passivation who are going to work in uh, uh, performance improvement in tin based lid based uh, uh, or other some pair of sky devices uh, thank you for listening to me and watching me uh, stay blessed take care allah face